Clarissa. Clarissa. Make a secret? You actually don't need to find any perfect brush to get better at all. <gasps> but wait. You only need three tips and once you master these, I can definitely guarantee that you will master at any brush. Disclaimer, knowing these three tips won't get you better. Don't forget that you actually have to practice and apply these tips to your daily drawing if you even do it. The more you keep these tips in mind and practice, every single brush will be the perfect brush for you. Okay, you're probably wondering why is this so important? Like, why is clarity important? When you make lines like this and you go over and over again, what you have here is this, it's just too much decision space. So let's compare the thickness to the clarity line versus the one that you go over and over again. So you can see that the second one, the lines are too thick compared to the first one. Now you're probably wondering, isn't that a good thing though? Because like you emphasize the expression, the emotion that goes into it. But you draw the lines and it looks like this. This is because your sketch line is too thick and all of the emotion and exaggeration was put into the sketch. Essentially, you're cutting out all the crucial information that your sketch line has. That's why your line art feel a lot less emotion and it feels empty. Okay, let's take this example here. I put in more details around the eyes and the mouth. And so the face here seems clear, but the hair feels a bit off. This is because I just use a thicker size for the brush. As you can see, the lines here are so thick and it's just unclear. So using this technique of clarity, you will be able to prevent that muddy look on your sketch. Now a comment here that most of you heard is adding thickness to each and every line that that line touches. Well, this, this is correct, but there isn't enough context given into this. Like, it's just too vague. So here is an example. I, on the right, I decided to add weight to every single line that that line touches. Now, this is all right, but you can do better. Go for 100% in your art. So on the, oh, that one's on the left, I just realized. Now on the right, I thought about where my light source is. And then, so in this example, the light source is coming down. So the shadows will create around under the ears and under the neck. Just simplify it. No need to overthink it that much. Now here, I'm going to emphasize the weight. Wow, that looks way better. Like you don't have to add too much details. Keep it simple. Okay, so in this example, I have two circles. Um, on the left, I'm going to draw how it looks like if you were to draw your colors. So as you can see, it's all batchy and stuff. Now on the right hand side, I decided to color in the big shapes first, which is the overall shape. And then I went for the medium detail, then the smallest, and then the little details, which is the highlight. As you can see that this looks way better compared to the one on the left hand side. By shifting to painting the biggest shapes first, focusing on the biggest shapes, it could drastically improve your art. Let's look at this pie chart. So mm, technically you want to focus on the biggest shape as much as possible. An example of this is when a pro artist starts their painting with a silhouette. Your art skills are probably around here, so you can't really wing off any shape from heart. Let's take this example. This is a head reference, by the way, for those who don't know. Now, most of you will probably just draw the circle. So basic. You never want to start off with circles. Circles are round and it just doesn't have any face or angles. Compared to this triangle, when you turn it this way, you can clearly see where each side is facing. Like this side goes here and that side goes there. But for a circle, yeah, no. So for this pie chart, we shall move on to the medium shape. All right, so we are now progressing, which is a good thing. With the medium shape, you can define lines. Rather than copying the reference, try to capture its essence. So here is an example how to not draw every line. Just try to capture the darkest areas. Now, what do I mean by this? Take a common example like the map. Now, usually I will draw this 
by the middle of the lips here and the bottom lips. Essentially, these are the areas where the darker shadows occur. And you wouldn't want to draw the upper lips as it looks weird. Same applies with how you would draw the mouth, where each line connects to each other like this. Ooh, spooky. Now, same applies with the nose. So I'll quickly break this reference down. The biggest shape is the silhouette. And here, I have simplified it. Now we break it down even further. The medium shape. I can start to map out the shoulders, the collarbones. I classify these as the medium shape. As these give off the overall emotion and essence that goes into this. Then I will draw the simplest form of the face features. Just to see where they would sit on the face. Now, time for the details. This is just like the finishing touches. It's like adding the chocolate to the batch of plain cookies. Mwah. These are like those hair pieces that stick out. You are finished. Super simple, super basic. So key overall tip here is just simplify, simplify, simplify. And then practice. The same thing applies with the painting. So just break your shapes down, start painting the bigger shape, and then go smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then to the details. That is all for today. Hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.